We're here with Lucas of Palacon, Development Director for United World Wrestling. Lucas, tell us about how you got involved with the sport. Um, so my background is in sports development, sports management. I've been working in that field for about 15 years, all told. Um, and about 18 months ago, I got a, I got a phone call to go meet with President Wallace to talk about an opportunity maybe in the development sector in uh, wrestling. So I'm not a wrestler. And, it was a bit of a bolt out of the blue, but it was good timing. It was around the time that wrestling had just gotten back in to the Olympics. So, uh, yeah, it's something I went into, but I've also had an experience of working in other sports that I didn't play or that I didn't know as well. So, uh, handball being an example. So, it was it was a bit of a dive in at the deep end, but it seems to have worked out well so far. Good. We just heard about some of your projects during the Women in Wrestling panel here at the NCAAs. Tell us about some of your upcoming plans and projects. Yeah, I think. Um, you know, the, the Super 8 campaign that we ran this year was the first time we run it and it was, it was really a good opportunity to see what worked and what didn't work and I think uh, we've done a big policy piece now with United World Wrestling so that's, that's kind of underway so there's uh, yeah, kind of constitutional changes, political changes, things like that. But now we're looking more at more specific projects on the back of what came out of Super 8, so on the back of the research as well. So uh, one key thing that we're doing in November is a women's only coaching course, and that's going to be supported by Olympic Solidarity. So it means that we're going to target probably about 15 women wrestlers uh, to come and get their coaching qualifications and get them involved in coaching positions in their different federations. It's fully funded, so it's not going to cost them anything to come. It's just a case of making the commitment to, to go and do it. Um, on top of that, we have a women's development officer, Nadine uh, Takara, who's working behind the scenes to, to really implement that plan. So uh, she's supported by the Women's Support Commission as well. So there's there, there's kind of a coming together, I would say, of, of different people, both on the political side and the working side and inside the office. Um, and through our uh, development officers around the world as well, so we have one on each continent. Uh, they have a clear target as well in terms of women's wrestling. So trying to get more federations involved, trying to get more females involved at the competitions, uh, but also trying to get uh, more targeted female opportunities, especially for coaches, get more of those coaches in. So we know that those female athletes are out there. Um, they may have recently retired or not have had the opportunity. We really want to try and get them back in the sport and, and keep all of that expertise that they have and pass it on to the next generation. Great. Now we've seen a lot of changes as Fila has transitioned to United World Wrestling. Talk about what's coming up in terms of uniform changes or potential rule changes. Give us a little insight on that. Yeah, um, I think on the on the uniforms, um, we have a, a small working group that's being created at the moment. Um, that's going to include athletes, uh, coaches, and other people, um, and they'll get an opportunity to test the different. Uh, examples of different variations that there are. There's nothing definite yet, so I know a lot of people are, are quite anxious about what might happen. All, all that's been agreed in principle, I think, is that you know there needs to be some, some modernization of the same level. Um, how drastic that is, I have no idea. So it's, it's going to be up to uh, that group to do some work on it. But it'll also take into account you know, uh, the, the manufacturer's uh, point of view, um, as well as national federations in terms of you know what, what's actually practical as well in terms of changes. The timeline originally for that was to try and have something for the World Championships in Las Vegas. I'm not too sure if that's still deliverable, but that's what we're trying for. But we would definitely hope that by the Olympics in 2016 that that, that would be in place. I think on the, the rules side, um, if we talk about freestyle and women's wrestling, I think what we've done with the, the changes most recently is implemented those and reviewed those and we're gathering statistical data on that the whole time. So I don't I don't think there will be much change in, in that regard. Um, the feedback we've had from athletes especially has been largely positive. Um, so if it's not broken, don't fix it. So. Uh, uh, so we, we just want to want to keep it going the way it has been. I think on Greco-Roman we have a bigger challenge in trying to implement positive changes with the rules. Also, also conscious of you know, just not tinkering with everything for, for just for the sake of it, you know. And, and I think that maybe in the past that that was uh, you know an allegation that would have been uh, pointed. Now this is your first NCAA tournament. What do you think so far? Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's quite interesting. I keep saying that the continuation on from St. Patrick's Day as an Irish person into NCAA seems like a, a natural fit. Um, and it's, it's a real festival atmosphere. I think you know, people are really you know, wearing their colours, supporting their teams, and that's really nice to see. Um, I don't have any team to support really other than Wisconsin. Um, so it's, it's, it's funny to see you know, everybody getting behind the teams and, and kind of the little rivalries that are going to the different colleges. Um, you know, in terms of the spectacle, it's, 
it's a great event on the mat as well. So there's lot, so much going on and finding it hard maybe to focus on one individual match. Um, but luckily I've had some good people beside me. Adeline was uh, taking me through the different matches earlier on and said, okay, that's a pain, that's not, that's good, that's bad. So it's, it's, been, it's been fun to watch and I think it's, you know, it is one of the biggest wrestling events in the world and it's, uh, it's really quite spectacular and it's a lot that we can learn and it's a good opportunity for us just to observe and, and see what things can be improved in our own events. Well, thanks so much for your time. Enjoy the rest of the weekend. Thank you.